Hey guys, so it has now been over one month on testosterone. Woo! Um, I was meant to do this video last week, but a lot has been going on in my life and I haven't really had the time or um, the mental energy to get this video done, but it needs to be done. So, I'm going to start with changes. Changes have actually been really subtle so far, physically wise. Um, as it has only been a month, there shouldn't really have been much changes, um, but there has been many changes emotionally. Um, physically, I just have loads of spots coming up. Um, they're all mainly clustered on my neck. And I get the odd one on my face, but not as much as I did when I first started tea. But I do have a feeling that it is only going to get worse. I've also noticed that, well, not just me, but other people have also noticed that my arms and my shoulders have broadened. Um, I've definitely filled out into my t-shirts and shirts a bit more. Um, I tried putting on my best friend's coat the other day and I literally just couldn't fit in it because my shoulders were just huge. I feel a little bit stronger when it comes to lifting and pushing things, but that's only when I actually have the energy to do so. But I'm still weighing around 13 stone, which isn't a problem because I'm starting to feel that more of it is muscle mass rather than my chub, although there is plenty of chub. I've also found that um, it's easier for me to appreciate my physical appearance once I've had my hair cut or I have a shave or something like that. Um, I feel that... Well, I feel more masculine um, to start with, and I don't mind looking in the mirror quite so much, whereas before I have such a problem with it. In this weather, having longer hair, it, it makes um, makes me so much hotter, which is why I keep it nice and short as well. It stops me from getting quite so hot, because at night it's absolutely horrible. I'll literally just wake up in sweat, so I am the worst heater in the world. I just produce so much heat, it's crazy. Uh, do you remember me talking about my taste buds and wondering about the changing of taste buds in one of my first videos, I think it was. Um, but my taste buds have definitely changed. Um, I've fallen in love with coffee, which I used to absolutely hate more than anything in this world, um, apart from fish. Um, I can drink tea, basically black with no sugar, instead of milk and two or three sugars, whatever I used to have. I've completely gone off peas. I do not like peas anymore. And, the weird one, I'm starting to like the taste of fish. Yes. Weird moment. I'm shocked. But I like it. I like, I like that my taste buds have changed. It means that I can confidently try new things that I probably never would have tried in the past because I know that there is a chance that I am going to like it. Which is great because it means more food to eat. Emotionally, however, I am absolutely exhausted. I'm constantly tired, I have very little energy and my body aches all the time and I genuinely just want to sleep literally 24 seven. The best way for me to keep myself going is by setting myself targets every morning. Um, when I wake up, I literally I write a list. I write a list of everything that I need to get done, whether it's like take the rubbish out, feed Fizz gig, give Fizz a bath, have a shower, something like that. If I don't write it down, I won't do it. Um, I need to have it set as targets, otherwise I become really lazy and I'll just sit in bed doing absolutely nothing. I've noticed that I've become stressed all the time it's something that if something really tiny stresses me out that's it it just it, it builds so quickly it could be anything like um can't find the tv remote or something like that i just suddenly switch and i'm stressed i'm angry i'm going insane doing just little jobs um like feeding fizz anything like that if um just little jobs like that they absolutely drain me i really i can't find energy to do lots in one day at the moment. I've also noticed that if anybody gives me any criticism towards anything, I just go on into a full down melt, uh, full on meltdown. I, I can't deal with any criticism right now and I've, I've no idea why. It's not the person personally, it's just I, I can't deal with it. And it's especially not easy at the moment. I mean, I've really recently just come out of a, of a relationship and usually at this point, knowing from past experiences, I'm sort of lying in bed, crying my eyes out, wondering why the world is against me, but I haven't even cried once. Um, my body hasn't even tried to cry. Um, it feels really weird, actually, because I am so used to just crying and crying. <sighs> I'm reacting completely differently, emotionally wise, towards situations. I feel like I want to be upset so that I can, I can release everything, but I, I physically cannot cry. It's driving me insane. 
Lately, I've noticed a lot of people have asked me how much happier I feel since coming out. And I find that's actually really, really difficult to answer. I do, I do feel happier uh, within myself. I'm finally changing something that should have been changed years ago, but I wasn't able to due to my lack of knowledge of what a transgender person was, really. And I especially didn't know that I'd, I'd grow up to be one. It's, it's not something that I, I ever expected. It wasn't something that I knew about. It, it was, it, it didn't really exist um, in my social life, which I think is where it's easier for, for people to sort of understand it more and feel more comfortable around it if it is in your social life. So if a friend of a friend knows a friend that's trans or something like that, there's, it, it will come out eventually. Someone will say something and that's it. You suddenly know what a transgender person is. But I never had anything like that until I was about... I mean, the first transgender person I met, I met when I was 18. But before that, I had very, very limited knowledge on it. That made it a hell of a lot harder, but I am happy. I am honestly happy. I just, I don't, I don't think that there should be this sort of stigma that once you've come out, you should be the happiest Larry on earth because that's, that's not how it works. There is a lot of stress with being anything that's against social norm. So LGBT and Oh, all sorts like interracial couples and anything that just that people don't accept usually it, it's a very split world um it, it causes a lot of stress on one person especially with the whole having to come out um because they're busy worrying about when's the right time how am I going to tell people? What if they hate me because of this? And I think that's probably one of the scariest points when it comes to being different as such. Um, that's in hope for a better word. I don't, I don't like using different. I think we're all the same. We just have different wants in life, different interests, different everything, which is what makes us, makes us different as such. I'm glad, personally, that the majority of my friends and family accepted me when I came out, which did make life a hell of a lot easier. But I feel really terrible for the people that don't have that support. I feel that um, a lot of the time I look ahead and think, man, I've got a hell of a long way to go. And I know that I shouldn't think like that and just live for the day that I'm on, but it's not as simple as that. Uh, every transgender person looks ahead and thinks, with these waiting times, my surgeries won't be complete for this many years. I'm not going to be at this point for this many years. This is going to happen next, but I don't know when that's going to happen. And that's, that's a really difficult part of transitioning. It's difficult because a lot of people have the stress of deciding what surgeries they want. If they want to have surgeries, that is, or if they want to go on hormones, how they're going to go about it? Are they going to go through the NHS? Are they going to go private? What surgeons are they going to use? I mean, there's a hell of a lot to think about. And that puts so much stress on one single person that there's no wonder that if you meet a trans person, they're probably not at that ha at their happiest point. It just, I feel like it's it's rare. There's always something, there's always sort of a problem with their transition, which is, is it's horrible. So... It's not, it, overall, it's not all fun and games. Um, it's not just an instant ball of happiness when you come out um, and you start your social or physical transition. It's, it's really hard work. It's a waiting game full of patience and sometimes money that you don't have but you wish you did and you'll do anything to find that money. I also have another exciting announcement. Um, I've been booked in for the 4th of August uh, to have surgery in France with Dr. Coustal. I think that's how you say it. Um, I'm genuinely so excited, <laughs> as you can see. And once I got the email, I've been bouncing literally everywhere and almost crying with happiness. Not quite crying, can't cry, but almost crying with happiness. And it means that after summer, I will no longer have to wear a binder. I can't get over it. I, I really, I really can't get over it. I mean, I'm, I'm rocking. I'm going crazy here. I'm taking my best friend Lisa 
Tony because I know that she'll look after me and she's my best friend. Um, and it'll be it'll be great. I think I think we'll have a really great time. She'll look after me. Uh, she'll be there, giving me plenty of support. Um, and I found out another guy is having surgery, same place, same day, same surgeon. And so he's going with his his good friend, and we've decided that we're all going to go together. We're going to split the cost of uh, accommodation and food and all of that to make it quicker, make it easier. And I know I'm talking really fast. I'm really excited. This is what I do. I'm really sorry. I just I, I can't get over it. I mean, from today, I have 76 days till surgery. 76. I, I'm going insane because it's like no time at all, which means that I need to get saving. I need to get prepared and figure out what on earth I'm taking with me. Luckily, I don't have the problem of having a thousand pairs of shoes anymore, um, so I don't have to choose. I'll take two pairs. That's it. Maybe even one. I might just take one. I'm currently preparing a top surgery shopping list, uh, which so far I've got dressing gown, large shirts, like button-up shirts, and movies, I think, written down. But past that point, I have no idea what else I need to buy, and... You know, in all honesty, if you guys have any suggestions, I would love to hear them because I, I'm I'm absolutely clueless. I'm still trying to raise money for my top surgery because even though we've managed to get the loan out, I obviously have to pay the loan back and going to uni. That's not going to be simple. So any money that I do raise is literally just going to go back to the loan so I can pay that back so I don't become a bad person. So I am still raising money for the top surgery. And I am still training hard for my 100 miles event in July, which I know some of you know about, some of you probably don't. I will put a link in the description below so that you can actually read about it, um, check it out if you haven't seen me talking about it and want to know what I'm going on about. But basically, I'm riding my bike, bicycle, not anything else, bicycle, 100 miles to raise money for charities. Um, as well as my own top surgery and if you'd like to donate or sponsor me then it will give you some ways to do that but please check it out because these charities mean a hell of a lot to me personally in different ways I'm raising money for for very very close friends of mine um, family and it would mean a lot if if these charities got the money so that they are able to help my friends and my family so, so yeah Please, please check that out. I've spoken to Lucy and we've decided that trans life needs more involvement in my transition life. Uh, if you follow me, I really hope that you follow trans life because it is, it is my, it's my baby. We are still working on the script for the, the short film and the ideas coming up with that. I've just been so busy, so crazy mentally everywhere that I haven't been able to finish the script, but I am getting there. I promise you will have that at some point. But for now, we've decided that we're going to record a, a, a surgery mini-series, um, as Lucy put it. It will be separate episodes, uh, talking about different topics within surgery, such as the referrals and the booking, um, the thought processes of picking a surgeon, what you need to buy beforehand, etc, etc. Just different topic, different episodes, just sort of talk about anything and everything. It'll probably mainly be me. I might see if I can get a few other guys involved, I might see if Lucy wants to get involved, I might see if Lisa wants to get involved, so you can find out how she's feeling about coming to France with me. I'm looking forward to filming it all for you guys, uh, I'm really hoping that you guys are looking forward to watching it just as much, and if you have any questions about top surgery that you want me to add into, the, into it, then you're most welcome to ask me, I will try my very hardest to to put them in there. The more questions that we get, the more film we get to do, which keeps Lucy busy and keeps me away from my emotional state. But for now, after all this time, I'm sorry, I've tried to fit as much in as possible. It's quite a big update. Um, I think that's everything that needs to be said. But just like always, if you have any questions overall or about my transition, about trans life, then feel free to get in touch either through the comments or through any of the links below. And I promise I will try my hardest to answer them straight up or I'll put them into my next video and answer them through the video. But thanks for watching guys and I shall speak to you soon.